I wanted to try a new series of videos, something that I've been thinking about for a long time now. A lot of this like internet talk about films and television focuses on action and superheroes and comic books and all these big Star Wars-y things. I love that stuff a lot. It's a big part of my life and I love being able to talk about it and express my thoughts and feelings. But on the same end, I am a film historian. I love going back into the past and seeing film. I really do enjoy watching these old movies from the 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s even, I guess. Going back in time and just watching the evolution of film and characters and actors and directors and studio systems and all these things, it interests me a lot. So I wanted to do a set of videos where I could maybe talk about maybe even once a week, every now and then, just talk about a film from the past before the year 2000, just talk about it for a little bit, give my opinions on it, and just have a good time going back in the past and talking about film. I want to do this for a while, I thought let's give it a try, we'll start with one of the most recent films I just watched, and that is 1972's Cabaret, <laughs> Liza Minnelli, and Michael York. This is an interesting one to start off with because it's it's just kind of a weird movie, but everything about it works. So Liza Minnelli plays our lead, or would you say Michael York's the lead? This is the thing I like going back and forth with people on. I don't know which one of them is the main character. Liza Minnelli won Best Actress, but I also think it's Michael York's story because you see his character being brought into this big showy world that Liza Minnelli is a part of, and it just, it was really fun to see that development. You've seen this story done before in a lot of other things. There's a lot of similarities to La La Land. There's a lot of similarities to stuff we've seen in the past. I think there's a big Breakfast at Tiffany's vibe going on in this film. That's just what I got. I'm a big Audrey fan, but we're talking about Liza right now. And the thing about her in this is she is a character. Sally is a character we've seen a million times before in Hollywood. Before this era, you look at the 50s and 60s, women were portrayed in this way where... They showed power in a sexual way and this prowess that you haven't seen before and they were starting to become this bigger influence on a lot of things. And it was just, there's a powerful essence behind her, but deep down she's a broken person trying to make it in the world. And that's what you see a lot of in Sally in this character. It, re it really worked. Is Liza Minnelli the best singer? No, she's not. I know she does a lot of soundtracks for a bunch of other stuff. I don't think she's the best singer. This was good for her singing wise I think there's a lot of good going on there now this is kind of a musical it's not a traditional musical where they break out in a song they do quick cuts back to the cabaret where like the master of ceremonies is and he's hosting all these different things and what I liked is that each song was related to what's going to be coming up in the movie or what's already happened it was a really fascinating way to tell the story and that's what a musical should do the songs should implement what the story is you know don't throw in a song just because you need a song. That's why I had issues with The Greatest Showman sometimes, but that's neither here nor there. But every song in this, it kind of showed you what the characters were thinking on the inside. The last cabaret song that Liza sings, you see what the character's thinking, and it really just worked. And it was it was really just interesting to see that go around, you know? They're, the songs aren't memorable, and that's kind of a problem with this movie for me, was the songs weren't very memorable. I, when I watch a musical, and I'm a huge fan of musicals, I am a man, I love musicals, Singing in the Rain is one of my favorite films of all time, Moulin Rouge is one of my favorite films with Ewan McGregor in it, before Obi-Wan, I love them, but the songs aren't memorable in this like they are in some of those other ones. That's fine, because the story worked, and the relationship between Michael York and Liza Minnelli was really good. I know people that are like this. These eccentric personalities who deep down want to be something they know they can't be, but will do whatever it takes to get there. And then you got the people that are like Michael York, one of my best friends, is a lot like this guy. And he's just, he's quiet, he'll let things happen around him, he'll go into any situation. He knows who he is and he's comfortable doing things that other people want to do for him. I loved their chemistry, I thought it was electric and I felt every moment of it. And I was super excited when they had scenes together because you felt it. They built it up from the beginning that she was this over-the-top personality and he was this quieter personality, and it worked. It was very Breakfast at Tiffany's, and in Breakfast at Tiffany's, it's a great movie. It was just an interesting time, and I had a lot of fun watching this movie. I haven't seen it a bunch. I saw it a few times, but watching it this time, I really started to appreciate the subtle nuances and all the characters, and Maximilian is probably the most underrated character in this movie. I mean, Liza Minnelli won the Oscar, 
that guy had a lot of just subliminal things going on that I think he deserved more, and I wish he got more. So setting this film in the 30s in Berlin, I love it. I know that's how the book is set, and it really helped, because what it allowed it to do was show you this part of the world and how going on in it, things are terrible, the Nazis are occupying Germany at this point in time, they're like, I think, that are they the highest political power at that point? I'm not really sure. But the way they are, and they're occupying the state of Germany, it was just really interesting to see, and there's this one character whose name is escaping me, but she's of Jewish religion, and you just see her relationship with Maximilian and a bunch of other people. That was really interesting to see. And what this really does, it did a good job of showing us how the Nazis are occupying the area, because they could show you these little things, but that's not the focus of this. This is the world we're in, so we're seeing the world, but we're focused on these characters. One of my favorite shots, I won't get into very much, but our main characters are driving away to go somewhere, but we just see a body that was beaten up by the Nazis on the ground. I love that shot. And I going back just kind of behind the camera for this for a sec, the way the camera moves is very Moulin Rouge, and I know this came out way before Moulin Rouge, but I got a Moulin Rouge vibe, and I really did like that. Baz Luhrmann, I guess, would be the vibe it got. There's, especially in the cabaret scenes, the way the camera would move and follow certain things and show you exactly what you need to see to give you that edge or that style. I thought it was really well. The camera felt like its own character, and it felt like we were in the cabaret. I really did like that. Oh, So, I don't know. If you guys think this is a good idea for a series, let me know. I could go more in depth on other things, but just to start it off, Cabaret is a fun movie. Are the songs great? They're okay, but the sequences involving the songs are great. The characters and relationships are great. This isn't a story that's new or fresh. We've seen it before, but it's a great 70s film. Liza Minnelli, probably at her best ever, whatever you say, that's her best. It, it was just a really fun movie to watch, and I just thought, you know, I'll talk about it, guys. Cabaret was really good. Yeah. What other one should I talk about? More coming up if this is good. I don't know. All right. Catch you guys later. Good luck.